Absolutely. Thanks very much for having us today, Nate. Really appreciate it. Yeah, excited to be here. We've got a, an interesting talk track to go through. Um, Sons and I have been really thinking about, you know, how we move uh, XR races to the next level. Um, we'll give you a quick overview of, of what we're going to go through today. Um, I'm going to go through a bit of the background um, of XR races so everyone's aware of, of who we are and, and what we do and what we've done. And then Sumit's going to take over and walk through some interesting uh, concepts that we've been working on to help us uh, grow um, as, a, as a company. So, so, yeah, without further ado, I'll kick things off. Um, basically, Exiled Races is a team where one of the first blue chip NFT projects, our projects built on, on Moonbeam. We were very early on with the Moonbeam team working on some interesting stuff together to, to bring it to life. Our team is... is uh, is strong in many ways. We have, uh, you know, the likes of Sams, Racer Dev, the whole team from a studio image, can include Nils, Luke, uh, Sanju, um, who've done some incredible work from a creative side. Um, Sams is actually a very modest front end dev, back end dev, all the devs you can think of, he does it all. Um, he actually uh, helped work on the FICO credit score algorithm, which is used by millions of people around the world. Uh, I myself have worked across Web3 for a long time. I actually worked with Hutch back in the day at Status.im. I also worked at Yieldly and I worked at Google for about nine, ten years. And uh, and our dev, Racer Dev, has worked across a number of of global brands across across the globe. And he is our back end blockchain dev, doing incredible stuff. So yeah, that's that's our team. Uh, Sumit, I don't know if you have anything you want to add on that. No, I think you covered it all. I think, uh, you know, we've got a good mix, like Ben was saying, of of both Web 2 and kind of Web 3 backgrounds, which I think is going to come into play as, as we talk a little further in the talk of, about how we're able to mix kind of the two. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on. Um, so a bit about what XR Races is or who we are. Like I said, we were uh, one of the first NFT projects on Moonbeam doing really high fidelity NFTs um, as an art art form and we spent a lot of time um, creating really cool NFTs which you'll be able to see uh, at view.xrraces.com for those of you that haven't minted before this is a place you can really get a, a feel for for the type of art we've created um, we've also got a bonus low touch racing and prediction manager coming which is a bonus game for those that have got the NFT we're working on some really cool stuff going forward um, if you move along to the next slide, we'll give an example of the type of NFTs we've designed. Like I said, if you go to view.xrraces.com, you'll be able to see the quality of these NFTs. You can actually download the high res versions of these to see the, the effort we really put into the stuff, right? And, you know, we, we set out as our goal to, to not only create really high-end NFTs, but to actually create some kind of very fun, low-touch um, game, which I'll go through in the next slide. And I'll talk you through this. Um, we had a vision very early on to to create a a mix of you know Web three gaming, fantasy sports, and prediction markets all in one place. And you know we wanted to bring that together in in, in the form of a game that's very low touch, um, that allows any user to hop in very easily um, using the NFTs uh, from Exile that we created. And, and the, the concept is quite simple. It's very similar to uh, any fantasy sports type app where you pick your team and then you go and you, you have an outcome, right? In our case, we have three different types of NFTs. We have pilots, racecrafts, and boosters. Um, these NFTs have different attributes that, that impact performance. Um, and you, you put that, that, I guess, what we're calling a racing stack together um, once you've seen a racetrack and the attributes that the racetrack have and decide what stack you put into race and then there's an algorithmic outcome um and you can actually view the 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 race in a 3d form which is what we're developing so it's very light touch very fun bonus game that we've created to ultimately start um deploying or you know giving out to market at some stage and we'll be announcing something at the end of this talk which will kick things off um but like as we were going through this if you go to the next slides i mean um what, what we realize is that a lot of the growth is going to come from outside of just where we are right now. And Sumit's going to go through what that looks like, right? Because we have big, big markets to go after, but there's always um, challenges with onboarding. And that's where we focus this conversation on today. How do we onboard 
you know, these web two users or, or users from other chains and make sure it feels native or familiar to them. So they're not, they're not scared of, of onboarding right now. A lot of the challenges we face XR races and many other games and platforms is that onboarding is super, there's so much friction um, everywhere you go. Um, so we're trying to think of ways that we can onboard these users in a native way or something that's familiar to them. And, and Sumit's going to talk through that. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, and like Ben was saying, like we have such different groups of, of users that kind of overlap in many ways. And, and, and Web3 Gaming, which I think, you know, we have a lot of our users I, I see in the chat uh, here, but uh, there's a lot of new Web3 games coming out and it's very partic particular to a certain type of game right now. Uh, and we're trying to break the mold a little bit and how we actually build our game uh, moving it from, uh, you know, probably a web two and a half is probably a better way of putting it. And, and, the, and the main reason behind that is that we do have um, kind of these other verticals that are a big part of our game, which including the fantasy esports community and kind of the fantasy betting uh, community as well, which may, may or may not already be, uh, you know, familiar with web three. Um, they, you know, obviously we all hope that they will be, uh, relatively soon, but, uh, you know, the, the way we're sitting right now is, and that's why I wanted to talk is, is name the way is that we're, we're still in a web two world and we're trying to integrate kind of a web three game in that. And so, you know, th there are a number of challenges that, you know, we're facing. And I think this is something that I think every kind of everybody on Moonbeam, but everyone generally in Web3 is facing at the same time. And we're hearing this from a lot of other developers, a lot of other dApps that are building, is that, um, you know, you're kind of hitting a wall when it comes to growth, right? There's um, a number of reasons for that, and I'll, I'll be going through those. Um, but, you know, the, the, there's a bit of a, of, a, of a growth spike and then kind of a lull and then kind of a drop off. And, and, and the reasoning behind that is, um, is for many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is, uh, you know, the Web3 community is still growing, right? There's there's a, a small set of us that are, are kind of big champions of it and are growing it. And in order for this space and this ecosystem to grow and for Moonbeam and everything to, to, to get bigger, we need to find ways of, of getting new users involved, right? And so at EXR, kind of our, our three kind of big pillars um, for, for making this game successful uh, is accessibility, scalability, and sustainability, right? And so what does that mean, um, right? Accessibility, like, you know, one of the biggest problems we see right now, and I think anybody who's used kind of a new chain um, can kind of a, can attest to this, is that um, there's a lot of barriers of entry, right? And so we noticed this also when we were minting on Moonbeam as well, is that, um, you know, when we have our friends who maybe are not as Web3 savvy as us, uh, they need to install a wallet. Most people don't know what that means. Uh, you know, I've had the process of it took almost 40 minutes for me to help somebody install a wallet at one point, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and then once you have that wallet, you need to then install the correct chain. Uh, you need uh, actual currency uh, in that chain. So to get that currency can be difficult, right? You may have to buy assets in the exchange, bridge them across, uh, you know, into wrapped chain, you know, wrapped uh, materials, then changing that and whatever it is. And so there's a lot of, um, you know, friction involved into onboarding anybody into Web3 in general, but also into, uh, you know, adapt itself, right? And then the final thing, especially with, with gaming, is that in order to actually play the game in most Web3 games, you need to own the NFT. So that means that you need to, you need to actually go in, acquire it, whether that's buying it or whether that's if it's a free or, or paid NFT, you have to actually then buy it. And so there's a lot of barriers of entry to get people in. And so... Um, you know, a lot of what we're doing behind the scenes is trying to figure out how to reduce these barriers of entry, right? When it comes to scalability, uh, you know, scalability is all about how many users you can get, right? And so how many, how big can you make the funnel to get more and more people into your game or into your dApp to help it grow uh, at the bottom of the funnel where people actually come out and do things that you actually want them to do, right? And so if you're on a single chain, which most games are on, whether it's Moonbeam or there's a lot of games on other platforms like uh, Polygon or Solana or whatever it is, uh, your your growth is kind of limited to the users that are in that single chain, right? People who are familiar with that chain, um, who are champions of that chain, who are going to use the chain. Uh, and 
secondly, the NFTs themselves uh, reduce your potential of users, right? So uh, with NFTs, you, you don't want to just send out thousands and thousands of NFTs, hundreds of thousands of NFTs to, to grow a game because that devalues what people are buying, right? And so uh, you want to make sure that the NFT quantity is, is small enough so that holders and owners of the NFT uh, are still retaining value, but then big enough for the, there, there needs to be mechanisms in place for new users to join without actually owning, uh, whether that's renting, whether it's trialing, and, and we'll show you some of that um, in, in the next couple slides. Um, and so that scalability factor is severely limited there, right? Uh, and then the third kind of sustainability is, is kind of in the long term, right? And so you're seeing this a lot where you'll see a game pop for, for a couple of weeks or for a couple of months. And then it kind of over time kind of slowly dies and people who are using it or own the tokens like are kind of held with the bag. Right. And so um, like, how do you, how do you then keep this game sustainable over the long period of time? And, and one of the biggest issues we see is that, you know, it depends on, on the chain growth, right? If people aren't using the dot sum ecosystem on, on Moonbeam on different and different chains, uh, if you're a single chain game uh, you know, you're, you're severely limiting how far you can grow. Um, and, and in a broader scale, Web3 adoption in general, right? So that's, you know, getting more and more people onto Web3. And so what we're calling this is kind of like level one, if we're going to use gaming terms, like you're in level one, that's kind of single chain gaming, right? So that's currently what EXR is, that's on Moonbeam, that's what most uh, Web3 games are, right? What Moonbeam does really well, which one of the primary reasons why we decided to use Moonbeam over a year ago when we started building the game was that it has the ability to go cross chain, right? And so that has the ability to talk to different chains, whether that's Polkadot or Binance, Polygon, uh, whatever it is, anything that's uh, obviously Polkadot's e not EVM compatible, but you know, it, whatever the EVM compatible chains are, uh, Moonbeam is able to talk to them. And there are a number of different uh, technologies that help us do that. But what this does is allows you down to scale, right? So, accessibility becomes a lot better, right? The first tenant, right? That means that people on any of these chains are going to be able to play the EXR game, right? Uh, the scalability uh, goes up, right? Because that means there's more users across all these chains who are able to enter into the EXR ecosystem to actually play. Um, and so, you know, two of the tenants are now, you know, able to be solved using this. And, and we're, we're working on, uh, ways of being able to send, you know, messages back and forth between these chains using the XCM technology on Moonbeam um, to to kind of be able to uh, have people on these chains experience EXR. Um, for anybody who's watching or uh, who's a, who's an EXR NFT owner, um, you know, the the NFTs are, are are still living on Moonbeam. So Moonbeam becomes a central hub for all the racing, for the NFTs, for the data where these other chains are satellites, um, where users can log into the game using their chain. They can use those chains currencies to, to bet or whatever they need to do. Um, but then uh, everything still lives on Moonbeam with its you know, speed and transaction costs and things like that that are super scalable for us. And kind of level three um, going from there, which is kind of sustainability part. And this really ties into a lot of what EXR is because of our user base, right? So that's level three, which is off-chain gaming, right? What's, what does that mean? That means uh, we're going to be allowing uh, any user, regardless if they own a wallet or not, to be able to play, right? And so um, that means being able to use an email address to get into the game. That means being able to rent um, or buy with credit cards. Um, you know, We don't think we need to limit um, who's able to play the game depending on if they have a wallet or not, right? The, the game data, the game assets everything to do with the game can still live on chain, but the front end user experience is gonna be able to be access, accessed by any of these types of users, whether that's off chain, multi chain, or within a, your single chain, which is Moonbeam. Um, yeah, and just adding on to this guys, like as you go up these levels, the size of your audience grows significantly, right? But it also, the, the challenges of onboarding increase as well, right? So you've gotta you've got create these onboarding experiences that make it possible to get the growth that you need in this. And then Sumit's going to go through that now. Yeah. So I'll show you a concept. This is obviously just a demo. Um, it's not live site. I don't think you're going to be experiencing this in the next, you know, couple days or something like that. But this is the way we like to think about um, 
these kind of levels with it when it comes to onboarding users, right? And so if you're building an app, um, you know, most apps right now have you just connect to a wallet and you need to be on the current chain that they're currently on. Um, you know, we're, we're taking that and flipping it a little bit, right? And so we're saying when you log into EXR, you'll have an option. Whether you, you can either log in using your email address, uh, you can log in using the current chain that you're on. So that in this example, that would be Binance. Um, or you can switch over into Moonbeam uh, and get a more immersive experience. So for the email and the Binance users, you're going to be able to play the game. For the Moonbeam user, you'd be able to interact with your NFTs in a different way. Right. And so what this does is it allows us to treat every user on their own. Um, and so each user, while they're, you know, coming in from a different mechanism is still able to experience the game the exact same way. And so once they now log in um, using whatever mechanism that is, and, and by the way, like that, that might mean that like you use your email to log in to set your lineup, uh, even though you have a wallet, right? So maybe you're on your phone, maybe you're on your friend's computer or whatever it is, you can quickly log into the game using your email and make your adjustments without needing to import your MetaMask, do all those types of things, right? And so that makes the user experience significantly better, right? And so once you've done this, we immerse you directly into the lore of the game, right? And what, why do we do that is that, you know, the technology is just one piece of the game, right? Like we see a lot of other apps um, continue and the next step is even more complicated. Like now that you've logged in, you've got to do this other complicated thing and then something that's even more complicated. And and for us, it's, we want you to, to quickly immerse yourself into the game, get used to what you're going to be doing and that flow is exactly the same for every single person, whether you're off chain or you're on chain. Um, another quick thing that you know that we think is interesting, and this is coming from a lot of our Web two backgrounds for for Ben and, and I, is that um, you know you have these users who right now in Web three gaming you have to actually buy an asset to use it, right? So it's a pretty heavy upfront commitment to to get a user, right? To tell them. Hey, you need to buy or purchase this before you can actually use it, right? And it, it works in AAA games, um, but you know what works even better, and you see this in e-commerce and different places, is that having some kind of a trial or a freemium type of product uh, allows people to actually use the game, um, and then if they actually then like it, then, then they can upgrade and, and buy things um, as they move on and, and move forward. And what that allows us to do is to bring a lot of non-Web3 types of people in for free. They just need an email address to log in. They can trial the game without paying, right? They can go in and they can get some very simple assets that uh, allow them to, to play the game, not with everybody else, not with, you know, all the, all the bells and whistles that you're going to get if you, if you're, if you're an owner, um, but the ability to actually get your feet wet and actually get moving, which allows us to expand the top of that funnel that we're talking about. Right. The, the other thing we're doing is that, you know, a lot of other games and a lot of other apps will will just then put everything in front of a user so they'll say okay here's here's three thousand assets go ahead and pick pick uh the five that you like right uh, that's a super daunting task for a user when they're coming into a system and so we're working on kind of packs so you have the ability to you know go from a free trial to the next level up which might be something that's cheap to get into the game to allow you to rent four to five assets that are on a lower level to get into the game, right? And then obviously being able to be a pro and then choose a pro pack, which means going in and selecting your assets that you actually want to buy or actually want to rent. Um, and so like, what does that look like? So for like a limited trial, that means, you know, something as simple as this, right? That could be showing up a pilot, a racecraft and a booster. These are obviously kind of trial assets. They're, they're grayed out, uh, you know, it has limited gameplay and allows you to get into the game as quickly as possible, reducing the friction, letting everybody into the game, right? If it was a starter pack, that would be, you know, now they're now they're in color. You know, obviously this is a concept, but um, you know, you have your three items that you've been given. Um, that means that the user doesn't have to go and sort through thousands of items. We just kind of assign you some items that you can you can rent. Maybe you rent those for three months for a certain amount of money off of another user, right? And another big piece here is that, you know, when you do go cross chain, when you do go off chain, you're allowing for people to use whatever mechanism they want to actually pay for something. And so that's why you see kind of down here saying, hey, like if you don't have Glimmer, you can just use your credit card. If you don't 
want to use a credit card or Glimmer, you, you can play with USDC or with DOT. Um, and so that allows you to have a more um, immersive experience with, with whatever chain you're coming in on. And, and if, you, if you prefer to pay with you know, BNB coin, go for it, right? And so we're able to then uh, allow people to have a, a very streamlined experience saying, hey, I'm on, I'm on Binance. I'm going to use BNB coin. I'm going to race to other people that are in BNB, right? So um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the end of the talk. I, I mean, I, I don't think a uh, lot more to cover, but um, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just, over, I'll, overall, go ahead, Ben, yeah. I'll just add in here, guys. Like, look, growth is super important. And a lot of teams are going to struggle if we don't try and be smarter about how we onboard new users by coming up with new novel ways to onboard users. Like this type of concept, is novel, but we have to try these things. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect from day one, but we have to try these things to grow. I can't imagine how hard it's going to be to, to take an onboard users that are used to such seamless onboarding free to play experiences from web two. We're going to have to, we've got a big uphill battle to do, but we're going to try it. And that's what Exod Race is about, right? New ideas, conceptualizing onboarding. And I'm excited to see what we can do here. Like Smeet says, this is a concept. Um, at the same time, there is a bit of a reveal here, guys. That's what you're waiting for. I know you. I don't know how much time we have here, Nate, but I am going to have, while we're live, I'm going to post something. Um, Sumit, if you want to just close up while I do this, um, I'm going to publish something because we are doing some new onboarding stuff very early, and we'll be able to show you right now. I'm going to be publishing on our Twitter right now. Yeah, so check out check out our Twitter. We've got a, a little bit of a leak on our Twitter that Ben is publishing right now. Um, you're going to be as as you know while you visit the Twitter, I, I can talk through it. It's basically we're we're opening up registration for our training, so the game will be released soon. Um, and so um, for the next 48 hours, you can sign up uh, using the link on our Twitter uh, to training.exalteracers.com. Uh, for the next 48 hours, we'll be giving out a uh, kind of commemorative uh, training pass NFT that you can own um, that, you know, shows that you are in generation one of training and uh, it allows you to, to, to get into training as well. So uh, yep. please check out our, our Twitter and you'll be able to do that as well. We have just posted that team. It is literally sending, there's a bit of a teaser video associated with it as well. So would appreciate any shares you guys can do. It will be very greatly appreciated. And we look forward to, to chatting more at some stage, Nate.